Welcome to Baylord TV and this edition of Inside Story. We ask the questions you want the answers to. And now our host, Ingram Jones. Good afternoon, welcome to Baylord TV. This is another episode of Inside Story and this is one that's a little special. The guest tonight, Trezor Luar Luar, the footballer played in the Premiership for Newcastle, um, played for Portsmouth, played for Blackpool and Olympiacos, to name a few of the clubs. Trezor Luar was known to UK fans for his famous somersault when he scored goals. Um, the reason why this particular interview is so special is because Luar Luar is a personal friend of my own and it was just great to see somebody grow from being the guy that just played football you know in the area uh, that we grew up together in in Forest Gate and uh, to him being you know signing for a, a top Premier League club so the interview I did was um, at his training ground so I'll let Luar Luar tell you more so without further ado let's hear what Luar Luar has got to say how you doing? Thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. No problem, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, listen, we got lots to catch up on, man. Yes, bro. Listen, since you, since you moved back, since you moved back home, man. I know. I'm in your silence now. I'm not hearing you anymore, bro. <laughs> okay. How, how are you, man? How's I'm, things there? I'm great. I'm great. Being in Grenada is fantastic. The weather's great. It's election day today, so. Bit of tension in the air between the two parties, NDC and NNP. So, who knows? By the end of the day, we'll have a new prime minister. We may have a new prime minister. So, nobody knows what's quite going on. Really? Yeah. So, um, yeah, what exciting time? times in That's Grenada. Pardon? Pardon? What's the, what's the time there now? The time here now is one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, lucky man. And I can see that there's a bit of sunshine there. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Lots of sunshine, hot weather. Can't complain. Wow. So, talk to me. I mean, for the, for the, uh, for the fans who may not know who, who you are or your background, um, tell, it, tell, tell the fans who you are. Um, well, I go by the name of Lomana Trezor Loa Loa. Mm -hmm. um, footballer, professional footballer. Mm -hmm. uh, played in England, uh, Greece, uh, Cyprus, Qatar. Uh, now, currently in in Turkey now. Okay. Wow. Uh, played so, for Car Carabao Sports. So. Okay. Um, well, we we used to we used to, when I used to go to school, I used to see you the first time we really we I remember talk because you used to go. Uh, I'm, I'm right. You were at Forest Gate School, was it not? Yes, Forest Gate School. That's what um, that's what I'm an East London boy. I grew up in London, and uh, yeah, Forest Gate boy. The first time, yeah, in Forest Gate School. Yeah, and I was uh, I was at St Bonaventure School up uh, Upton Park. Who remember? Yes, yes. And we we that was I, like a, a rival. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember bumping to say to you said to me, "Yeah, man, I'm, I'm I'm getting picked up to play for Colchester." Do you remember that? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's where I first started, really. That's my first um, professional club. And I was, I was like, Colchester, yeah. I said, I remember saying, you stick with it, bro. You're going to go places. You're going to go places. And then the next day, I swear, it must have been a few months later. It must have been, a, I don't know, time exactly. Next thing, I switch it on the television, and I'm seeing you. I think it was Bobby Robson. And you yeah. and Bobby Robson on the television. Trezor Loire Loire has signed for Newcastle Football Club. I'm like, wow, well, hold on a second. Well, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, hold on, nobody, nobody, asks my, nobody asks me about this. This is my spa, yeah? My spa from Forest Gate School. My spa is going to go and play in Colchester. He's now playing for Newcastle. I'm like, wait, wait, well, what about me? I'm like, hold on a second. Wait, wait, who, who are you? Who are you? So you're, you're a spa, but I'm like, what? I'm like... Uh, you know, and, and obviously it was funny because I actually played football manager. Um, so it was like, at that time I had sense, I think it was uh, football manager or championship manager. So anytime I had championship manager, 
I'd pick, I'd get Luar Luar, so I'd get you and I'd play with you on, I'd play with you up front. So it was quite funny. So um, I was really, I was proud of you at that moment that you were able to play at Newcastle. Thank, you, thank you, bruv. You know, actually, I'm actually, I'm actually lucky in a way that um, every person that I kind of met, because you know, obviously, I believe that certain people come into people's life. There's different type of people. Some people stay, and some people are just passengers, and some people obviously come to just mess people up. But I'm lucky to be blessed by those people that um, was around me. They gave me that word of wisdom, wisdom, because obviously. With them saying to me all the time, like the likes of you, and I can never forget Mr. Hat from school because he played a big part of me being who I am, really, because he was the first person to actually buy me a football boot. And I remember for me, my dream was to be a gymnast. And, um, and I was trying to do everything like, to force him, like, sir, can you not see? I, I just want to be a gymnast, you know, just push me into this. I don't want to do nothing else. Not, athletic uh, or anything, not running or 100 meters. I just want to do gymnast. But I'm blessed that because he saw me, when the day that he saw me playing football, kick a ball, and then from then on, he just said to me that, um, forget all these gymnasts and things like that, you're just going to be a professional footballer. And I had people like him, you and uh, one of my close friends, Mike, and everyone that I kind of met that said to me that, um, you know, you've got a, you're gifted, you know, you can really go far with this. And, and hearing them all the time kind of gave me that, you know, believe in myself, you know, hearing you guys saying that, and I kind of believe, I took that in, and, 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 and I thank you guys, and I always, I can never forget Mr. Hart and the people that played part, because without you guys saying that, I don't think I would have ever made a football. Thank you so much, I mean, I, uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm humbled, I generally am, because, you know, to hear that from somebody who has made it as a footballer, and has played for some of the top clubs in the world, I mean, that's, you know, I'm, 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 uh, but I've got so many questions to ask, so it's going to be, you're going to have to, be, you'll have to bear with me with all these questions. So I'm, I'm gonna... here, man. I ain't got, I just, I just, I'm actually now just finished my training. I'm in a training camp. Okay. Really, and that's why I'm, off, I'm, I'm free, man. I, I go all the time, bro. So, okay. Yeah. I'm going to be bumping all over the place with you and I don't do scripted questions. So I'm going to be a bit all over the place, but I want to find out as much as I can. So... I want to go back into your childhood. Um, so you're not, you weren't born in England, right? I wasn't born in England, no. I came, in, I came to England when I was nine years old. Okay, okay, okay. Nine. So where did you, where we, where was your, where did you, where your origin? I'm, I'm, I'm obviously from Africa. I was born yes. in uh, Kinshasa, which people probably know it by Zaire, where okay. um, the rumble, 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 rumble in the jungle. jungle. Was uh -huh. Ali. So now it's now it's known for Republic Democratic of Congo. Okay. So I was born there, and obviously, being young and uh, obviously there was the war and things like that happening there, and my father kind of brought me to to England. But when you're young, you don't really get to ask questions why why you're taking me away, and why this. So for me, it was just I'm traveling with my father, so I didn't know where I was going because obviously my father was a footballer himself. So I, I was I was like his boot boy. I was just following him everywhere that he was going. Wow. So um, for him, he wow. just brought me to England and left me with my, with his sister, my auntie, and and she was like a babysitter for me when I was in in Congo anyway. So when my mom and dad used to go to work, she's the one that was looking after us. So she was like a second mother. So I was just happy that I'm gonna reunited with my auntie again. Wow. But I wow. didn't realize I didn't realize my dad was taking me away from my mom. You know so. That must have, well, you're nine years old, so, you know, how did you integrate with kids in the UK? Because there's a different upbringing from Africa to yeah. here. So what was to, to, to the UK? So how did you, I mean, at nine years old, did you feel any different to the other kids when you, when you came to school? Um, it was very difficult, you know, but obviously being a kid, you just, you kind of, some it was the language, language was very difficult because I couldn't speak English at all, uh, you know, obviously. Wow. In my country, we speak French and, and African language. So, mm. But when you're a kid, that you kind of talk to people, communicate through computer games and things like that. So mm. this is what was kind of saving me because you meet people and then, you know, kids, you just want to play games and things like that. But it was very difficult because, you know, it's, our mentality is a bit different than, than European in which ways that we grow up to not to fear the pa uh, parents or elders but respect so i can never talk back to my older sister or it doesn't have to be my sister anyone else that's older than me 
But when I came to UK, it's like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was shocked seeing like kids answering back to the, you know, the, the elders and then parents and things like that. For me, I was like not used to that because, you know, you you get you get beat, you don't get beaten up, but you you know you you they teach you discipline. Absolutely. You know? So it was so it was a bit different and things like that. But you know, but I, for some reason, I met good family, good people around me. Like one of my best friends that I grew up, I still with now, Nathan Henderson. The family took me in, and uh, I think I learned. Um, I learned my English there, and also there was another um, white family that took me really well, Patrick Smythe, Smythe's family. So yeah, I've so learned about Smythe. Yeah, I remember Smythe well. Yes, yeah, so I've learned really things from there and kind of mixed, and there was really good people. They took me in, they, they took me into the, um, their house and made me like a family, you know. I became like a wow. family to them, so they made it really easier for me, and, and I really appreciate them for, for doing that, so... I was, you know, I'm, I'm blessed in a way that, I, like I said, people that I met really took me in. And, um, and I, I thank God for that. So life, I mean, I went to school, uh, my primary school was Odessa, Odessa, Odessa school. Do you know Odessa and St. James? <laughs> St. James Junior. Yes. That's all I went to as well. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. So we went to the same primary school. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> Since everyone in Forest Cape went to... Uh, St. James School. I, I think that's what I think that's what I met. Um, if I'm not, I think that's what I met your sister. That's what, I think we went to the same. Yeah, you did. You would have met my sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we went to the same uh, same uh, junior school. Yeah. So wait, how old are you and, now? Um, oh, I'm It's I'm 32 now. I feel wow. old now. Well, you so you feel old. I'm 36. I'm 37 this year. So <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about old man. Don't Brad, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can relate to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can relate to me on this one. That um, you know, when I was um, when I I, I was actually younger, yes, like playing football, mm. I didn't feel it. I wouldn't feel like I can go like I can sleep anytime and wake me up tomorrow. I will still run. I had too much energy. Now, but now. Now I really have to look after, like, I'm blessed that I've been around all those big players. Like, I had a chance to actually work with Saul Campbell in Portsmouth. Okay. And he's always used to say to me, hey, you got to watch the way you eat. you got to really rest. You know, because when you reach a certain age, you really have to look after your body really well. So, um, and I didn't really, I was thinking, nah, that won't, work, that won't happen to me, man. I have too much energy. But I feel it now, you know, so I really, if I don't rest, sometimes I, I, I don't recover. It takes me three days to recover now. Wow. Wow. So you, you mentioned about Portsmouth. Uh, I do want to go on to Portsmouth, but I want to come back. So you've actually, so you were at Colchester. Well, the last time I saw you, I mean, like spoke to you, you were saying, you know what? They want me at Colchester. And I said, you know what, yeah. bro? Go for it. Go for it. you got to start somewhere, man. Go for it. And I said, don't listen mm. to them. People are talking rubbish. Because most of them people, you see them there, they're gonna, you, they're gonna pass you by. You, I mean, you're gonna pass them by, and you're gonna move on to do what you got to do. Them people are just talking whatlessness to you. And uh, yeah. so, what happened? I mean, how long were you at Colchester for? Um, when I started at Colchester, I think I was there. You know, it's funny when I went there. I first went there. Um, obviously, people knew me by the name of Lamana. Yes. And uh, from school, so um, my, Lo, Lo, Lo is actually my granddad, and then gave me that. And okay. obviously, I wanted to make him proud if he was still alive, to you know, because it's it's funny. When I was young, my my grandfather said to my dad that I um I have something special about me, and then I'll, I'll, I'll he said that I'll make the name Lua Lua proud. But obviously, I never knew what he meant. And um, obviously, when I went to Colchester, people in school back in Forest Gate, East London, was saying to me that, oh, there's this boy, you know you're going, you're playing in coaches, so there's this boy, Lua Lua, everyone's talking about. And at that time, they was kind of comparing me in East London with Joe Cole, skillful-wise, you know? Um, so, and then I was saying to... That... Yeah, and I was, saying, I was saying to my friend that I am Lua Lua, and they'll say to me, nah, we know you're skillful, but they're saying this boy, obviously, Premier League club's been looking at, uh, looking at him. You know, he's going to go far. But obviously, you know, when you're young in a, mm. in a lower team, lower teams, what they do, they produce young players to sell so they make money. Yep. So they won't let me do no interview. 
So there was like they didn't want people to know they they didn't want people to know me physically. You understand? So they was kind of protecting me. So I'll keep saying to my friend, listen, I am low low. And no one in East London in the first gate will believe me. They say, no, nah, your name's not Lord. How come we don't call you Lord? How come we call you Lomana? And I just, I said to her, I didn't know how to answer them. But it happened one day that when I, I said to, obviously, my teammates in uh, my young cause, I went there as a youth team player. But it only took me two months. Then I signed professional. And then from the day one, I told all my, my, my friends, like youth players, I said, the day that I'll play for the first team, I'll score. And then I won't be long. I said to him, I'm not here to stay here for, to play two years in, in this division. I'm looking to go up. And all of them was laughing at me. And it happened that God blessed me. The first match I played, I came on last 15 minutes. And the first ball that came to me was bang, go. And my life completely changed after that. You know, I used to, I remember I used to go in, uh, in, pose, in coaches, I used to go in town. And people would just say hello, because obviously they was coming watching the games that, in reserves, and they were saying to me, oh, you're a good player. But from that day that I scored in the first team, it was like I wasn't the boy that they used to see anymore. Everyone just started looking at me different. So it's like everyone will come to you for autograph and things like that. My life just changed completely after that. And then after a year, it only took me one year, and then I was gone. And Newcastle came along, you know, Sir Bobby, obviously, um, who was like a father figure, you know, like he really was good, and he just came... Bro, I'm, you know, I'm proud that I, I was actually being bought. I was bought by one of the best manager around, you know, and then one of the most humble person that was around. And a person that trained Ronaldo, Romario, the list can go, Alan Shearer, the list can go on. So I was blessed in that way. And wow. so, you know, um, Colchester was actually a, a stepping stone for me, just my the door to open, which I thank him and, this is my heart. Coaches has always been my heart because they gave me the opportunity to, to, to make it, you know, they open up the way for me to be, to, to, to reach the top level, you know, so, you know, um, and I, they always hold a place in my heart. Wow. And hopefully before I finish football, I would like to go back there and um, play again at least one season just to say thank you to them. Wow. Wow. Touching. Real touching. So you mentioned a few names there. Alan Shearer. Now that was for me. He was like, I don't know. He was just a guy. He was just a man. Like he's a legend. My yeah, friend. he was he's legend. A, I mean, we, bro, you know, the best, you know, the top scorer of Premier League. He holds the number one in the Premier League. So, you know, um, bro, I've been blessed to play. Bro. If I go like? on the list, and, what was he huh? like to be? What was he like to play with, uh, Alan Shearer? Bro, the guy was a, uh, you know, once we. Um, once we was invited to um, to attend, his uh, um, it was like achievement, you know, when they give you the key to the city. Yes. Um, in Newcastle, and we have there for like fifteen minutes. They put fifteen or twenty minutes. They put like his video just goes. But the only thing you can do is stand up and start clapping because this man was just poor. He was, he was a nice person. Always have it. He always have time for uh, youngsters. When you need help, he's always there, you know. And uh, I, one thing I do remember now, and I always pass on to the youngsters, that like he always said to us youngsters, he says, uh, a good guy, a good person in the, in the football life, you will never make it anyway if you're too, too good, too nice to people. Sometimes you have to show you have a side for people to respect you. And, uh, and go, he said, obviously, football is a uh, collective thing, you know, but unfortunately, you get judged personally you know, um, individually. And sometimes you have to be ready yourself first before obviously helping the team. So you have to make sure that everything's ready and come in training and, you know, pump up ready for it. Right? And um, just watching him, being around him, see how he was training. And he was just, he was just an uh, unbelievable professional. Right? So I'm, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed for, to, to have people like him and, like you said, um, if you watch those people, then you, you look at it now, you say, wow, they deserve it. He really put, he, he did really work hard to, to be where he is. I mean, he really is, a, he really was an outstanding world-class striker. England, to be honest, have not got a striker like him today. They just don't. No, nah, not at all, bro. But seriously, you know, I'm lucky, like I said to you, I'm lucky to play. If you talk about Alan Shearer being the, uh, uh, I think he holds the records. He's a top goal scorer in the Premier League and mm. after him is Andy Cole and wow. I actually 
have worked with these people, two people. And Nicola had the opportunity to work with him in Portsmouth. And um, you can see the two different. You know, obviously, I'll say Andy Cole was more of a footballer than Alan Shiva. But Alan Shiva only really need one chance to score a goal. Mm. You know, you give him a chance. And go. Andy Cole, it, it, Andy Cole will take him two chances. You know, so you can really see the two different players, you know. And, um, you know, I'm just lucky. But one day we was training, brother, and you know how you, you joke around. And I just, I just said, you know what, I'm going to get in goal. And we because um, normally after training, we always stay with him, Alan Shearer. We always do shooting and things like that. He always trying to help youngsters to find strikers, yeah. to find goals, you know. But I was in goal. I cannot believe what I felt, bro. They send one cross, and this guy headed the ball. It's like me shooting. This is power his head was. He headed the ball like I felt like I was shooting. And I could not believe that. Wow. And, and um, I was really just... You know, like I said, that uh, he's um, you don't be number one for not working hard, but it it takes the hard work. People don't really see what happened behind the you know behind closed door, you know. But he really works hard. He was always there first, always last to leave. He's a real professional, bro. Real professional. What does it take? I mean, a lot of guys say I see them in even just in Grenada, in the UK, around the world. They say they're at school. And I think I just want to be a professional footballer. I just want to be a professional footballer. And they think that just by kicking the ball around and playing for a club, they suddenly are going to become a professional footballer. What does it take to become not only a premiership football player, but to be recognised as one of the best players around, to get paid the sort of money you get paid? What does it right, take? Right. You, know, <clears throat> you know, I always say that once you, I always say to people, once you have the respect of the people that you work with, um, that's, that's the most things. It's not about uh, what other people say, but... Bro, uh, when I was when I I was in before deciding to play football, I actually when we was in school, we was, I went to Leighton College, <laughs> and um, when people was choosing the work experience, I didn't really have time because I went to football for a trial. I even went to Leighton Orient because I thought that everyone was saying that you're skillful. I went to Leighton Orient, I didn't make it. I went to West Ham, they didn't take me. They didn't say that I was good enough because I always thought okay, I'm skillful, you know, and then I'll make it easy. But it's not. It, it takes more than that, you know. You know, playing park football and play professional football is completely different. The discipline you have to, you know, how you have to live your life, what you have to eat. You have to make sure that you look after yourself really well. You have to make sure that you sleep and wake up. And you know, I didn't know none of this. And this is what people don't really know. People just think, okay, I, footballer just wake up, go and play football, finish. No, but you you have to use your brain. It's, it's all about using your brain as well, because knowing that when I was young, when I was playing, people used to say, uh, some commenter used to say, on t- oh, he can go past people. He doesn't even know how, himself how he does that and things like that. If you can do it one time, two times, three times, surely you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> and, 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 you, know, and I, you know, I was hearing those comments all the time. Uh, he goes past people easy, but people don't know what he's going to do. He doesn't know what he's going to do. This boy's been doing it for all the time, so I'm sure he knows. But, you know what I mean? So it takes a hard work. And like I said, when I was in uh, college, I had to work in McDonald's. And working in McDonald's made me realize, you know what? We're, we're lucky to be sportsmen, to be in a position that we are. Because there's people that work in real life, like, you understand? Like, they, they wake up every day morning and, you know, 9 o'clock to probably 7 o'clock in the, in the evening. And footballers, uh, it's a short time because mm. it's a short career and sh- you don't work right, but you have to give everything in that short time. You have to, you know, when you go training, it's probably two, and, two hours, three hours max. But with enough three hours max, you have to give your all. You have to show people that, listen, I really want it. I really want to be better than this person. I really, you know, I'm going to give my all. But when I went to Colchester, they made us run up the hill. Mm. And all these players had running shoes. I, I had my, my basketball shoe. Remember the LA gear? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I like, remember LA gear. Go on, my I was wearing that. But if you saw me running, all I was thinking myself, like, you know what, I've got, to, I've got to beat these people. I've got to beat these people. And I was running like I was getting chased by a dog, bro. And I was leaving people behind, you know, because I, I, you really have to work out. It takes a lot, bro. It really takes a lot. And you should not... You should know that yourself being a sportsman, if you know how hard 
you have to you know you have to put you, what you have to put in and people don't really see that people only see you now when they see they see lower now they see when you make it but they don't realize what you had to go through to actually be recognized you know you have, it takes it takes a lot bro you know people I, my friends used to run away from school and um i used to go to school but i never wanted to run away and when my friends was going out i had to sleep you know, when they're going to a nightclub, I have to sleep because if I go to a nightclub and then I go and play in match the next day, I won't be 100% fit, so I'm late, I'll am i be letting myself down. So I have to sacrifice. This is what I mean. You have to sacrifice. These were the words I was looking for. You have to sacrifice a lot of things to make it. And, and it's worth, it is really worth it, sacrificing those things because now I can actually see that and appreciate. I can say, oh, you know what? Thank God that I had Mr. Hat. Thank God I had my friends that used to tell me all these things. So thank God that they used to tell me, go to sleep early so you can be fresh for the next day. You know, because now I can turn around and say, yeah, it's worth it now. But before I couldn't, I, you know, it took me a long time. Like I said, I started at the age of 18 and now I'm 32. So I've been playing that higher level. So, so when, you, when, you make, when you make it, you've made it. How does it, how does it, how does it affect you in terms of now you come? So did you ever come back to Forest Gate after you played for Newcastle? Brav, I'm, I'm always in. I'm always in for. I'll never forget my roots because I think sometimes it's better. It's nice to go back to you where you started in a way. Basic, I'll, I'll call it. You go back to basic because sometimes um, when I went to Newcastle, the difference I felt like when I went to Newcastle is like I used to say to myself, "I'm going to be in a Premiership," but I didn't realize it would happen so quick. Because everything just happened so quick for me. I used to watch this Alan Shearer, the, um, you know, Gary Speed, late Gary Speed, the Robert Lee, all these big players. I used to watch them on TV and saying that, oh, one day I would like to be where they are. And then sadly, I was with them. But sometimes you'll be, you, I, I, sometimes it was like I was shocking myself, like we'll be in a, <laughs> we'll be in the canteen eating, and I won't be eating. I'll just be staring at Alan Shearer. And when he's trying to, when he's staring my way, I turn around because I couldn't believe. It took me a while. To, <laughs> it took me a while to actually believe. Damn, I'm actually sitting down yeah. with these people. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah. I'm you know what it feels like eating and and uh, you know being close to him. But mm. you know, and and because uh, cause them is what they were saying to me. Uh, you know what? Um, they, cause, I, they was calling me magician on the ball. When I things I was doing with the ball, they were saying, "Wow, you're really magician." And those things were those pushing me, you know. But I never put in my head that I made it, because if a day that I, I did put it, I'm even now. I don't say to myself, "I've made it," because every day you learn new things. Right. And this is where a lot of youngsters nowadays have problems. When we was younger, that you have to work hard to get this so-called much money you get now. But this youngsters is like they get money so early. I said this to my little brother because my brother's playing in Brighton as well. He was in Newcastle now they sold him in Brighton. And I said to him, you guys had your life so easy. Now it's football. There's a lot of money around. So they give you things now. You go and buy all this nice car. You're driving it. But you're, you have not done anything in football yet. You have to do it first. Because for me to drive a, uh, a Mercedes, for example, in Newcastle uh, training ground, I had to show that I've, I'm doing in the Premier League, you understand? So, but nowadays you get these youngsters driving and think because they signed a contract somewhere, they said they made it. It's, it's not like that, you understand? So, for it was very, it's, I never really took me a while to actually believe that I've made it because I think if I, I think that would be my downfall. When I went to Newcastle, I said to myself, I made it, I've arrived, I'm in the Premier League. And, bro, first year, very good, played my football. After that, I started getting caught up with this, uh, you know, celebrity star, uh, lifestyle. I start going clubbing and meeting all these women because football brings, you know, like money always bring all these wrong people around you and things like that. And that's wait, wait, when wait, I wait. needed to start. Let, let me hold you there. You say all these wrong people. You need to explain that to me because I have an idea what you're talking about, but the fans would say wrong people. Explain. What I mean, yeah, what, wrong people, what I mean, you, you, start, you start getting all these friends, like friends Hangers that on. just dead. Yes, they're just there for the happy time. You know, like say when you're a star, you go to clubs, for uh, example, you don't pay nothing. People welcome you. It's like the doors are open. But when I was in a footballer, I used to buy clothes. I used to buy things. When I became a, playing the Premier League, 
things start coming free. I start getting sponsors, Nike. They actually people start paying you for wearing their things. You understand? Then you start getting all these hangers, like the lies. You know, because football life, celebrity life. Some people might not agree with me, but I've been there. I know what it's like. You've been there. Know you know what it's like. It's all. It's a fake life. It's a fake life. I call it. You know, these people just. It's like pretenders. They pretend because they know, because they have all this money and things like that. Your name's going. All these doors are open, but you get those hangers just come around just to bring you all these, uh, say, women. They bring you, and you know, and some people get caught up like that. So and this is what happened in Newcastle. And for me coming back to, for I had to come back in Forest Gate to hear all those real people that that knew me before I became a footballer for them to remind me, you know. Um, you never was like this. This is how you are. You know, like I say to you, I'm, I grew up in a, in, in a Jamaican family, Nathan Henderson's uh, family. My friend, my best friend, his father was like my father. Everything that his father used to say to him, it's amazing that I, I was the one taking it in. You understand? Instead of him taking it in, I was uh, most of the people that are listening to his father, and I took it in. So coming back to Forest Gate, you meet all these people that used to, that will tell you, Come on, you're nobody. You're, who, they'll tell you who you are. Yeah, You don't have to. You don't. When you come to Forest Gate, you go back home. It's almost like um, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have anybody. You don't have to wait for somebody to tell you who you are. They'll tell you who you yeah. are. <laughs> don't worry about that. And you have to pay them. Yeah. They'll tell you whether you like it or not. Yes. Yeah, so it's like you, you know, you get. <laughs> but what? But when when you're, you're when you're not there, you go out. Those people that are with you are afraid. To tell you that, because they mm. just want, they just, they, they, they just there for the happiest time, you know. Because these people disappear. The moment that uh, the lights goes off, they don't want to know you anymore. Because they them don't them hangers, they quick to jump on another person. So Trezor, do you do you, do you know like if I don't mean I don't want you to name the hangers on, but do you know or when did you realize there were hangers on? Well, even even now, sometimes I still have my mom. <laughs> I still have my mom and my wife sometimes telling me that, you know, this person is just there for, because I, you know, it's so difficult to, to know who, to know um, who are the hangers or not. But I think now, you know, God's actually give me that wisdom and to actually start, no, I can see things out of these people and, you know, this person just here for the happiest time and this person real. Because I, now I have just a small circle of people around me and real people, people that I knew before football. I don't really, you know, in football life, you have people that you call teammates and people you call friends. And friends, there's not many of them. Friends are someone you can go around his house, eat around, chill out with. But in football, you don't really have many people like that. Really? You know, so... Um, really? Oh, my friend, football... Football is, um, there's a lot of backstabbers. I, I won't just say football, I'll say sports, because everyone uh, wants yeah. to make it. You know, you mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. you know, you I get understand. some players. I can't really name, I can't name no names, but when I was in, uh, I was in Newcastle, one of my good friends there, I thought it was a good friend, and um, we was, he was my roommate. We were sharing rooms, but I didn't realize, obviously, I always believe in an old way that you get judged on how you play. I can never go to a manager and say, uh, this person don't sleep. Reason I'm not playing well, because this person keeps me up. You understand? Because some people rest in a different way. I, I probably like to sleep to be ready for the game. You know, another person doesn't sleep. Another person sleep late. You know, but I had one, one, one of my teammates, who I thought was my good friend, went to say Bobby Robson and said, oh, the reason I don't play well because you put me in a room with Lua and Lua doesn't sleep, so he disturbed me. What? And it's a shame. That, yeah, and the manager came to me and told me, oh, your, your team, your roommate's complaining because you don't sleep and blah, blah, and you're always disturbing. That's why he doesn't. So he only did that for him to play. You understand? So there's a football is a lot of backstabbers, man. People, you know, people who... Who's there's people that who's made it by by grassing other people, you know, like we call it like by being um how do you call it? There's a name for those people that um Snitch, a snitch? Yes, snitch. <laughs> or grass. <laughs> so yeah, grass on you. Like the grass on you in the run, it's not like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, trying yeah. to make 
Yeah, yeah, they're, they're trying you... to get ahead of you. I understand them one. Sneaky, backstabbing snakes. Yeah, but so... it all pays back, you understand so. Wow, wow. So while we're on that point, that topic, I want to talk about um, a low point that, that you normally discover when people are... When you're on your back and you're and you're looking up in the air and you're seeing all the people that have kind of like stabbed you in your back, you can see them because you're on your back. You're out. You're out. You know, it's it's tough times. You know, you may have had a loss of form. The press. What are the press like, Trezor? Tell, tell me about the, the the British press. Uh, Bob, it is, uh you can never uh, love him or hate him, really, but um. But sometimes they go too far, you know. Sometimes they really, um, you know, it's, it's so quick to judge someone that you don't really know, you know. And that's what they do. They judge people without knowing, and and they they pick on people. I always call, I always say some of them, most of them are bullies, you know. Reason I left um, England, um, it was part of the press as well, because obviously my download was when I lost my child, I lost my 18 month year old boy, and I was injured. So it's okay, man. He's blessed. You know, he's a little angel. I always say baby's an angel. Um, and for them, it's like, I was injured at that time as well. And they was always keep mentioning it, mentioning this and that. And you know what they do wrong is that they wait, when you're doing things that are going well, they don't say nothing. But when things don't start going well for your team, and they always choose to pick on certain people. And, um, and for them, it's like when I lost my kids, I was injured and he was all the time talking about that. How he can't play, he can't play football anymore because his mind's not there. He's about a kid. And when you're trying to forget those things and trying to move on, and especially when you're injured, you know you didn't know how to get and how to to change this page. So for me, it was like I trying to make myself fit so I can play and so I can turn the page around so they can just talk about football. But um, I didn't do myself any justice because I wasn't ready. I was hundred. I wasn't hundred percent fit. So it's just like they were just banging on things and then they start talking about other things. And, you know, they, bruv, it's, it's, you really have to be mentally and physically strong. And you always have to have a good background, people around you, you know, and because um, the prices are not good people, man. They, <laughs> well, that's what they're pressing it. They're really there. <laughs> they do their job in a way. But sometimes they just they choose a story that's, like I said, they judge people without even knowing. Instead of like actually go up to per that person and ask him what happened, they don't ask him. Right? They just take like a little story and then just make it their own way, you know. And then you can see some of the titles. Some of the titles you see that they put doesn't go with the story of the person saying. But yeah, they're there to sell. They're there to sell. So you can't like you say when you're a star, like when not just football, when when you're a celebrity and in those lifestyle. You just have to accept what comes with it, the good and bad, and you just have to um, you just have to find a way to deal with it. And then in life, you know how it is. In life, there's always going to be low points, and you just have to be strong enough to 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 rise above it. And like I said, I'm I'm happy, I'm blessed because I I grew up in a Christian family, mm. you know. And then my background, my family, my moms and my friends, they all were strong mentally. And being an African, really, being a black person, not in disrespect, you have to be strong because. We, our parents grow and raise us that way, you know, so mm. you always have to be ready for whatever, whatever comes along. I, I mean, I, in regards to the press, I mean, my, my cousin, Jermaine Defoe, he went through a, yeah. he's been through a hell of a lot with the press. I mean, even that situation yeah. with his, with um, Jay Defoe, when 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 his, uh, his brother, half-brother died, I mean, that all that yeah. stuff. The stories that were told about him that, you know, Jade was a, a gang member and it was a gang thing that yeah. happened. I know it wasn't. I went to the funeral. Yeah. I know it wasn't that. But yet the press have put stories out that are not true. And I see the way they well, demonise like, him. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like, like you say, for them, they, you know, this is, this is another wrong thing that they do. You know, you, you say a lot of footballers that if most of the people that if they had the choice, that's why they don't like talking to the press because... Obviously, they never wanted to hear the real story. Before actually putting the story, they should always try to find the person and hear it. But for them, they just find whatever that they will catch or they'll feel like. They're just storytellers. But they, they make people, they, they really upset a lot of people, you know, because they, they mess up. And that's why I said that you have to be really strong because it, it's a lifestyle that is a, it's a environment that comes with the good and bad. 
and uh, most of them it's bad but you just have to be strong enough to re- to rise above it and you know um, and like someone like with Jermaine you have to f- sometimes um you have to sometimes like um use him as an inspiration bro because what he went through <laughs> was short of times you know obviously with parents and things like that yeah 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 but you have to look at look up to him and say you know what he's strong and this is a person that you know I, I can learn that you know from that situation you know yeah, Cuz has been a real inspiration to me. I mean, watching him score goals at the World Cup. Oh, we'll we, we get into the. We'll come back to you about the World Cup in a minute. But him scoring goals at the World Cup and you know, leading leading the front line for England and and the stuff he had at Tottenham and well, then he, going to Port, Portsmouth. I mean, ca- yeah, I, I know him as well. You know, because we always catch jokes when we saw each other and um, like you know, it's a shame because I uh, he, he's. I'm surprised how he never um, played for the big, 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 big teams, you know, like the Man U and things like that. Because this boy, every year, every season he plays, always banging goals. And um, wow, he's, um, he's a great player. He's mm. a great player, natural goal scorer. You know, you talk about someone who was closer uh, to Ian Wright, mm-hmm. like playing wise and goal scoring wise. He's there in the. And he's always showing it every year. He's always showing it, and and um, and I, I I love I love I love I love Jermaine. You know, I, like I say, every time we see him, we always catch jokes and things like that. And he's a good player. And it's nice to have someone from uh, East London as well that made it. Is also absolutely. There's a lot, you know. You'd be surprised. Even I was even shocked when Saul Campbell told me that he's from Forest Gate. Yeah, so Campbell's another one from Forest Gate as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I never saw it. I've never, you know, but I've, I've definitely heard about him, you know, so. Yeah, I was shocked because we was talking and he was telling me and it happened that certain people that I knew, he knew them. So I, uh, it was just, it's just a nice thing to have those, you know, like, I think he, which school did he go? St. Bonds and Edge, man? Or he went, he, went, he, he went St. Bonds and so did uh, Lennox Lewis, yeah. I believe. Same school I went to, Lennox Lewis yeah, from Forest Gate as well. Yeah, there's a lot of pl- there's a lot of players we actually and I was actually playing with them. It's all like you know you get people like Bobby Zamora who grew up in East London, uh, East London as well, you know. So there's a lot of players. Wow. But my inspiration really when I was young, it was I don't know if you remember Danny, da- uh, da- Daniel Daniel Kennedy. Yes. And it was like for him like when I used to watch him because he went to Forest Gate School. Yeah. And I think when, when he was young he was playing for England. He was, Called up for England. Uh, he was playing doing under eighteen or something. Or under eighteen or something. But he was playing for Charlton, and uh, people in school always used to compare me to him, and they were saying to me that you're more skillful than me. And for him to stop when I saw him, and people were saying to me that you're more skillful, you could be better. And for him to play for England at that age, and then playing for Charlton, this made me realize, you know what? No, I got to take football serious, man. I got to go, but. It's a shame, obviously, everyone has different destiny. He didn't really uh, follow his football, and I, I end up going there, you know. So, but yeah, so you just you, we learn from different people, you know. Like I said, um, Jay, Jay, uh, what a player he is, man, and he's proven like to now still banging goals. And I think he's uh, he's the main man for 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 him and Gareth Bell for for Tottenham. He's lucky, man, because he. He's in a team that that's my dream. That's my team. Or I support. That's my dream team, Tottenham. And he's doing. He's playing for a team that I would love to play for. Wow, wow. Would you still want to play for them now, or do you think? Do you think that's uh, too late? I think England for me is um it's behind now. I'm I'm changed my chapter. You know, when I the day when I'm, I left England, I came, I came. I went to Greece Olympia course and. That's the, you know, because it's not easy to make a decision to leave where you actually grew up because England is like my home. And, but when I, I saw different things, different lifestyle and different environments and, and sometimes in life you've got to be strong enough to make a decision say, you know what, I'm going to try different things. And, and for me, I didn't really, England was way past me now. It was like, um, it's my past now, you know, so... Um, so wait, you know, but so- I'll say, if Tottenham come, I'll go because that's my dream. That would be a dream for me to play in Tottenham. But I went back in England last year to Blackpool. Yes. And I never really enjoyed it. Didn't you? I never really enjoyed it. Why? I didn't really enjoy. Um, you, you know, like like you're several. You're you're in a hot country now. You see how people are. Yes. You know, um, they're smiling, they're relaxed. 
But in England, the weather and all these financials is making people depressed. And I'm a person, I'm, I don't like being around the depressed people that are mm. down and depressed people. I like to... Mm. Up and live, like live, 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 like. Energy. Yeah, I like that positive energy. And, and uh, in England, I, I didn't get that positive vibe anymore. Wow, wow. For me. So, so uh, how long? How many? Uh, how long did you play for um, Blackpool? Uh, one year. Okay. I stayed there for a year. Okay, and the um, manager was was Holloway uh, the manager then? Yeah, he and Holloway, some my friend, crazy person, but nice person, real. He tells you. I think he's probably the one of the realest manager person that I actually met in football that will tell you how he is right in front of you instead of yeah. being behind yes and i respect him for that and because you know like i said in football i'm sure in cricket like, i don't know if it's the same in cricket as well but in football you, you know, managers are fake they tell you one thing and behind your back they said another thing and but he was like i'm telling you how he is you ever like it or not and that's the way i, I live my life now so i like to tell a person how he is and whether they, maybe it might hurt them but it's always nice to tell the truth than to, to make up lies. Let me ask you a question. Um, as a black man, you travel to Olympiacos. Well, that, that's Greece or Turkey? Greece. Right. As a black man going to Greece, playing football, I mean, you hear a lot of the, the stories of, I mean, well-reported documented stories of the, the monkey chants and the bananas being thrown at black players and the racial taunts. What inspired you to leave the UK, which has got its own racial um underlyings to go to somewhere like greece well um you know obviously racial is always going to be there no everywhere you go there's always be racist um racism things and uh i'm i'm actually a patron of uh kick racism out of football and who was going around you know obviously telling kids that, you know, not to see colour, we all won. And um, when I went to Newcastle first, it was like that. You know, people like the and Andy Cole actually played, Andy Cole, Les Ferdinand, they played part of making the way easier for us youngsters that was coming through to go and play Newcastle because in their time, it was very dis- difficult to be accepted as a black, uh, as a black person. Because, you know, even in Newcastle, you go to certain places that there was kids that have ne- never seen a black person. And they'll be touching your skin, but they couldn't believe what was happening. Mm. So um, I've learned from that. You know, obviously those times are it's all ignorance, but, uh, and I don't, you don't blame those kids. You blame the parents, because I always say that, like now, if I if my kids become like uh, troublemakers, for example, and start selling whatever, it won't be. It will be the fault of the parents, because it's parents that learn, show them disciplines. Mm. And the sense of experience, that, like, like I said to you when I first came to England, is like for me to see my friends answering back their parents, I was shocked. And I could never do that. And you know, like I say, in Africa, and uh, never, I've never even knew such a thing as different colors. I've never, we never looked at it that way or saying, oh, or you're, you're a white person and start saying all these things. Never, it never happened. But for me, when I came to England, I started seeing that. And, um, but I was, it's, it's very hard. Like now, when you're older, you learn the way to, to deal with it, you because know, you just say to the ignorant and things like that. But a younger person, is very difficult for them to deal with it, you know. But I, I experienced it in England, a little bit, but we played, obviously, with the, with the elder players. They played part to make sure that the youngsters don't really get, um, get into that, that level of, uh, you know, racism and things like that to, to, to make sure they see see themselves as one. And when I went to Greece, and in one match, I remember uh, we were playing this match and because uh, I was, it was really 2-0. Now, I, I was really on form in that game. And the only way for them, the, which they felt like to, to get at me, was by um, being racist and start doing monkey um, so, uh, chants and things like that. And some of them, I remember taking one corner and one guy chucked a banana. And my reaction was, I took that banana and then feel it out. You know, like, you know, and for them, they were shocked, you know, because uh, all this person were trying to, bro, for me, I just said, you're just strong mentally and just have these people and these campaigns that we do and get all these 
big players doing it and making people realize because it's not about older people anymore it's about younger people the more younger people you get involved because the future is young people it's very difficult but uh, there's a few things i know you say all these things about the kick it out campaign and racism but when you look at the premiership profile how many black managers are there how many black managers are there from the premiership to the championship how many black black managers are there but, but there's not a lot, but we need more. We no, need yeah. more black it needs to be promoted, yeah. but it needs to be promoted. It's all right to talk about kick out racism, but you need to show it. I know not just a token black man, as it uh, Paul is. You know, you need to see that being encouraged more, and it doesn't seem to be encouraged in England. And I'll go further. Rio, the, the situation with Rio Ferdinand, when he refused to wear certain tops, and John Terry. I mean, Suarez got banned for eight games. John Terry. No, Brad, you're not- What's all that about? Sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to be fair, you know. Um, you know, sometimes in life, I don't know the, exactly the incident, and you know, but all I know that obviously he, he used that bad language against, uh, I think, uh, who was a real Ferdin- brother, a- Anton Ferdinand. Uh, yeah, and Anton Ferdinand. So, you know, obviously this was the time that, in a way, that they had to punish him for people to realize, because you know, tre- we just wanted to. We want to be treated the same, you know, because you know, we have to ask questions. See if a black player said, vice versa, said that to a white, uh, white player, we get the same ban as John Terry did, you know. You understand? Cause you get someone like uh, Suarez that they gave him a lot, I think. Eight I game ban. They gave, they gave yeah. Suarez an eight game ban, yeah? And Suarez isn't yeah. even the captain and of his so- country. John Terry yeah, is the captain. But, you know, I can see sometimes it was just, you know, there was, I can't really get into that issue, but it was, for me, it was like they were, I feel like they, they, they was protecting Terry in a way. But this was the time to, to send a signal, that, yes. you know, to tell people that, you know, um, we were not happy with this, you know. And um, but then we'll see what happens. But uh, sometimes certain things that happen then, Sometimes you just say the best way is just keep your just watch, look, and learn from it, and just keep your mouth quiet because some things you can say can just get you in trouble. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Let's move on. Let's move on to some more positive stuff. I know I did notice some. I did read some articles about you traveling around to Africa and doing stuff. Talk to me a bit more about that and and being a role model, an ambassador. Bro, well, I'm, I'm I'm blessed actually to um. To be, I'm actually an uh, ambassador of UNICEF in, wow. in Congo. Wow. Um, uh, I go. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm also lucky that I was a captain for ten years. I was a captain of the national team, and um, you know. So for me, I tell you my happiness knowing that in my country, that in Africa, there's war and things are dying, innocent people dying, and. Uh, starvation and things like that because I can never I always say to my friends that you can never say here that you're starving we're hungry but we're not starving because star- starvation is people that do not wake they wake up every day just haven't eat for like three four days and looking for food but we're lucky enough we don't have that because you always have food you always have this um, thing so my happiness really is to put a smile on someone's faces but when I was uh, when I was in Greece there was this boy that had cancer, and it, it happened in Newcastle as well. And um, this boy was supporting the team I was playing for. Um, and they asked him, you know, because I think they, they gave him two weeks until, uh, until he passed away. And they asked him what he wanted, and, and he said my name. He said he wanted to see me because he supported the team. And for me, it was a shock one. Wow, that's pretty tough. I mean, it's a credit to you to... To gone and done that, obviously that's what you would do being part of UNICEF. I take my hats off to you, uh, Loa Loa. Thank you so much for talking to Baylor at TV. So there you have it, Loa Loa on Inside Story. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Loa Loa for doing the interview, first and foremost, but it gave me a greater insight, and I hope it gave you a great insight into the life of a Premier League footballer. For me, it's great to be able to have an, to do an interview with somebody whom you've grown up with, whom you see rise from just being someone who played football in an area that you grew up in to 
being a Premier League star, to playing in Europe, to being captain of your national side, to being an ambassador for UNICEF. You know, um, I take my hat off to Loire Loire. Um, it's very, very proud to know that I've know, I know somebody like that. It's doing really good for not only for their, their own local community, but internationally as well. Something that I definitely would aspire to do, maybe not as a Premier League footballer, but doing stuff like UNICEF would be amazing. So, um, yeah. But, you know, I hope the interview has been insightful and you've got to know more about the Premier League, the Premier League footballer, the lifestyle of a footballer, and a few moral things as well in terms of the sort of people you associate with. And, you know, another real hard-hitting interview. Thank you so much for listening to The Inside Story. I'm your host, Ingram Jones. Take care now.